Good evening. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Monday night. It is the Earth Master out here. June 23rd, 2025 is the date. Uh, 10.40 p.m. local time, West Coast time here. Wow, what a busy day for uh, earthquake activity ramping up out here uh, across the Western Pacific. Let's go ahead and take a look here. Uh, by the way, the latest earthquake looks like some movement headed down south here around the Tonga Trench with a 4.2. And uh, somewhere out here in the green flag, we've got some uh, other earthquake activity out here, but uh, looks like a 2.6 there across the, uh, looks like outside of Greece there. All right, let's check out what's going on here across the Western Pacific here first. We've got, a, of course, a lot of swarming happening up here across the southern end of the Kuro Kamchatka Trench that we've been watching. A lot of movement here across the southern end of the Nankai Trough. Well, throughout the day today, we've watched that migration of pressure really ramp up here across this area. Uh, roughly Philippines uh, to the southeast along the plate boundary. Earlier today, or this evening, uh, 6.2 into the Philippines area. Now, the interesting thing on this earthquake is that uh, it's off of the subduction zone and away from the plate boundary. Kind of in a, it looks like a little fracture zone out here. Let's see the oceanic crust. Uh, and we don't get too much earthquake activity out there. It's a rather large earthquake in an unusual location. Uh, and if you look here at the historical model, far as, you know, his, history in this area, let me show you guys the, uh, the legend here. Here's today's 6.2. Well, of course, all the earthquake activity there is going to be around that plate boundary in the subduction zone of the Philippine Trench. But in this area really nothing uh for an extended mileage out here from the 6.2 today of uh, 4.5 and above nothing being recorded out here so it's a rather interesting event um and quite rare to get that large of an earthquake off of the region here but of course it has to do with a lot of pressurization going on out here across the western area and the adjacent plates here uh, adjacent plate that's going to be the filipino plate um and that's a lot of pressure going on here folks again we watched all of this migrate southward here today and then roughly seconds following that 6.2 we had some decent earthquake activity there into the solomon islands let me move this out of the way check out the timestamps on that okay so there's the 6.2 1858 05 1858 41 literally like 35 36 seconds or so we got that immediate adjustment happening down here across this area of the plate boundary i tell you what when the pacific plate moves out here it moves and uh, we'll see this on occasion here where things start to fill in quite rapidly looks like a lot of the newer quake here since these earthquakes are starting to ramp up here across the tonga trench right now uh, i don't let me see what we got here for new zealand well kind of spoke that into existence there uh, now we've got a 4.1 here across the South Island of New Zealand, right along the plate boundary here. We've got to watch that closely here. There's been a lot of movement here across the area of the Pacific Plate and adjacent plates. And I'm sure that's having some type of effect down here as well. It's, uh, literally, we watched it all throughout the day today. And technically over the last couple days here with the migration of pressure from the Japan area all the way down into Taiwan, Philippines all across uh, this area to where the Solomon Islands are and now Tonga Trench and up to the moment here New Zealand 4.1 earthquake really starting to ramp up out here when the uh, Pacific plate moves boy does it move let me tell you it looks like another 3.2 here across the area of the um, maybe just south there along the Philippine Trench I uh, here that's not going to show up far as that three-pointer goes but uh they got to watch this closely here folks so following these two earthquakes over here right we've got a lot of amplification going on um within a short time period we had a, a decent sized quake here very close to the puerto rico trench 5.7 earthquake that was a originally came in as a 6.1 got downgraded to a 5.9 and uh, looks like a 5.7 is going to be the final the magnitude here but that's even a decent sized earthquake here uh within uh, definitely within the hour time period from those two large earthquakes over here so things are really starting to shuffle up right now uh, across the plate tectonic world south america is starting to ramp up here as well with a recent 4.7 
I mean, things are in gear, so to speak. Uh, let's see what it's doing here to the west coast for California. Uh, still waiting on some movement out here across the west coast. I uh, Not a whole lot above 2.5. Uh, all of these here, very small microquakes. I don't see any major uptick going on here across the southern portion of the state for now. Uh, same for up north along the San Andreas Fault. Uh, Northern California, roughly about the same as well. These are a couple earthquakes there throughout the day, uh, including a recent 2.1. Uh, I guess we better double check the trimmer map out here this evening. See what we got for Cascadia trimmer. I can go right here. And 29 epicenters here. Not a big deal. Southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Underneath this area into that uh, the deeper levels. No earthquake activity to note here for now. But again, things are shuffling and moving around. And when many areas of the plate out here get moving, it can have an adverse effect out here across the land across the planet you know it's like a giant jigsaw puzzle out here the pacific plate moving off to the northwest well that can uh, definitely have some effects out here with the north american plate and and in fact you know any other plates out here that's a huge plate things are shuffling around into the pacific northwest here some movement uh, around mount st helens it looks like a little swarm of activity up there around the summit area uh, on that note, we better double check, see what we have going on uh, for the volcano seismograph station there. There's the earthquake activity over the last two weeks or so. The most recent in the red and the orange. So we got some activity stirring up there. Nothing big. It looks like the largest was a 1.2. Let's see what we got here for the seismograph station. See if there's anything showing up. Um, look at those... Uh, S waves there, the wavy lines from some of the large uh, earthquakes today. Uh, localized events going to be like this. Very small, very spiky, but there's uh, definitely a number of them in the last few hours here. Also through the previous 24 hours, quite a few spikes showing up there. No big earthquake activity, um, but the majority of these quakes are occurring. It looks like, well, some, well, this that, that one's way down south here, but uh, the majority between two to four miles or so underneath the summit area. And that could have something to do with the magma chamber down below. We'll have to watch that closely. Yellowstone National Park, nothing showing up there for now. Uh, give a real quick glance there at the area of northwestern Wyoming. Pretty quiet. Not a whole lot going on there. We did see the effects of that uh, large six-pointer show up. Uh, looks like Parker Peak maybe picked it up quite nicely here. Sometimes those large earthquakes can show up. There's Lake Butte, a promontory. Also Moose Creek over here in Idaho picking up that small little signal, which was thousands of miles away for that six-pointer. And the uh, five-point, uh, the five-pointer there in the uh, Solomon Islands. New Madrid seismic zone quiet for now. Texas oil field still rocking and rolling. I definitely keep an eye out here, folks, for... Uh, for some potential larger movement. I think we're getting really close to seeing an eight pointer um, somewhere out here. And it normally happens when things are rocking and rolling like they are right now. Uh, this is the yearly chart. On average, we should see this many earthquakes uh, throughout the year at uh, any location here on the planet. Should have seen one eight pointer by now. Uh, the last one was back in 2021. So that increases the chances there of potentially seeing a nine pointer. Um, 15, uh, 7.0 to 7.9. We're still below average on that. We're not going to cover too many of the numbers, but we've already checked this a time or two. Uh, got to keep an eye here, though. Like I mentioned, the western area here of the Pacific Plate, the adjacent plates, uh, the Filipino Plate right here on the northwestern edge. Uh, watch the Nankai Trough here. I'm telling you guys, it's uh, pretty well primed for some big earthquake activity. But that movement here over the last couple days has definitely dropped off across the... Except for this one up here. This I forgot to mention this one. Look at that 4.3 underneath the Sea of Oskir. That's a super deep earthquake. 320 miles deep here. And that follows a bunch of... Well, that follows a bunch of earthquake activity that's been happening down here and down south here. Some movement up here, including a six-pointer uh, in that location. Let me see... Well, that six-pointer was a little bit further south, but 
that deep earthquake there, a sign that this is really starting uh, to shove down underneath the area. It's a major subduction zone, the Curl Kamchatka trenches, lots of volcanoes all over the place. And uh, these deeper quakes there, a good sign of a high amount of stress out here along this location of the subduction zone. So watch that closely there. Uh, space weather activity, really not a whole lot to chat about. And here we're looking at uh, uh, lowering conditions in terms of solar flare activity. Now we do have a coronal hole, number 59, that uh, is facing us here in the last 24 hours, continues to face us it looks like. That high-speed solar wind stream looks like it's set to arrive here uh, in about 48 hours or so. It looks like the June 25th UTC time. Um, so tomorrow night potentially could see some starts of the Aurora, uh, but that's on the 25th here. So G2 class storm is going to be between 0, 09 and 12 uh, on the 25th. So we'll check back on that as we get a little bit closer there towards that time period. Again, no major solar flares, and the flare threat, as I mentioned, continues to drop. Got a number of sunspots out here, but they're continuing to separate here, getting some clear-cut separation and degrading of this sunspot that was actually quite, uh, quite nice looking at one point. Uh, everything else out here, not even worth mentioning. Pretty quiet conditions out there for the uh, solar flare activity. Um... No major severe weather threats out here. It looks like uh, for the day on Tuesday, got a slight risk here across portions of Wyoming and Colorado, portions of Nebraska up here as well. Got a little bit of tornado threat, but the main threat looks to be some large damaging hail in the hatched area out here from a lot of these storms that pop up. As uh, far as anything out there in the tropics, I guess we can go to the Hurricane Center here and check this out. We do have uh, one hurricane disturbance number one with a 70% chance of cyclone formation within the next seven days. It is offshore of Central America and Southern Mexico. Um, we'll continue to watch that. It is quite warm out here along the Eastern Pacific and uh, things are getting going. But that's the only area right now of any um, uh, decent concern. Uh, Central Pacific quiet way out in the Atlantic. Got uh, one little region out there. Only a 40% chance here, medium chance of uh, seeing some type of cyclone formation in the next seven days. Way out there, though. But uh, we are getting to that time period here where we could see uh, the Gulf here get pretty active with uh, some potential tropical systems. All right, so uh, just be on guard, folks. A lot, lot of movement out here. California has yet to move uh, in terms of seeing anything of any uptick. Uh, you know, following a lot of the events happening here today. Look at that swarm of activity there around the Puerto Rico Trench. That's a that's another area here that has, it does have some potential there to produce a large earthquake. Did a couple videos on that here uh, a couple years back. A potential for a tsunami if this thing does decide to pop here. A um, little uncertain, but it is a uh, definitely a, a concern. we got a five-pointer on there now. Well, earlier this evening um, with a swarm of activity following it. So we'll continue to keep an eye on it. Like I said, anything can happen here at any given time with all this uptick happening around the globe right now. So best thing to do, stay safe, be on guard. We will catch you guys out here for the uh, Tuesday morning update. Enjoy your night, folks. Have a wonderful evening. Stay safe.